Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Lecture 6b of Useful Genetics, and we're going to extend the previous lecture's discussion of DNA fingerprinting by talking specifically about the genetic markers that are used in this analysis. We'll talk about what VNTR alleles are and how and why VNTR mutations arise so often. And then we'll describe the set of loci that was developed for forensic work. So, as we said, each VNTR marker, each place in the genome that's a, a VNTR marker, has many different alleles. They're highly polymorphic. And this situation exists because of the nature of VNTR loci. VNTR stands for variable number tandem repeat loci. Loci are places on the genome. We'll unpack this backwards. They're repeats. They're short sequences present in multiple copies. As you see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five copies of the sequence GATA for this particular VNTR locus. These, they're repeats. They're tandem repeats. That means the copies are next to each other. They're not scattered around the genome. They're variable number tandem repeats because the number of repeats in each allele differs. So these are different alleles of this particular VNTR locus. And the alleles are characterized by how many different copies of the repeat there is. This is allele 9. There are nine copies of the re repeat present at this position in the chromosome. So this is a position in the chromosome, VNTR locus D16S539, is a place on the chromosome where some people have five copies of GATA, some have three, some have six, or seven, or nine, or other numbers. So VNTR loci are so variable, they have so many different alleles, because DNA polymerase very often makes mistakes when it's replicating these sequences. And the mistakes that it makes aren't that it puts in the wrong base, but that it puts in the wrong number of copies of repeats. And that's illustrated in the next slide. So Here's DNA polymerase replicating DNA that contains a repeat. And I've illustrated the newly synthesized DNA in green, and the template DNA repeats are shown in blue. Now, surprisingly often, DNA polymerase kind of loses its grip on the template strand. Normally, this isn't a problem because the sequences that it's replicating are able to base pair with the template strand. So when it comes back, it because it hasn't gone far away, and when it comes back, it just zips right back to exactly the right place. But if the DNA contains repeats, short repeats like VNTR loci, it can come back at the wrong place in the string of repeats, as illustrated here. It should have come back so that this repeat here was base paired with this repeat here. But instead, it came back one repeat over. And the result is that although the template strand had three repeats in this segment, the newly synthesized strand has four repeats. When the cell divides, the cell is going to inherit this mismatched section of DNA. And if the repair machinery doesn't correct it, a daughter cell is now going to have an extra repeat in its array of repeats. VNTR markers occur at thousands of places around the chromosomes, but a particular subset of 13 have been chosen for legal and forensic work, and this is called the CODIS set of VNTR markers. There's actually another set used in some countries. Um, CODIS stands for Combined DNA Index System. And these particular VNTR loci were chosen because they have the following properties. They're highly polymorphic, not just in Europeans, but in most populations around the world. 
they're on different chromosomes. As you'll learn in Module 7, this maximizes the chance that different children of the same parents will have different combinations. And there are typically repeats of just four nucleotides. This achieves the best balance between mutations that generate diversity and mutations that would change the alleles from a parent to a child, for instance, which would interfere with identification analyses. The frequency with which these markers change was addressed in one particular study. And what they found using the CODIS markers was that the frequency of changes in copy number was about 10 to the minus 3 per gamete per generation. So that's from parent to child. And this may seem like quite a small number, it's one in a thousand, but it's an enormous number compared to the rate of point mutations over the same period, which is about 10 to the minus 8. So this is a hundred thousand times faster mutation rate. Most of the mutations that occurred were a single repeat, a gain or a loss of one repeat, um, more commonly gains than losses. Um, longer alleles, alleles with more repeats, were more mutable because presumably they provide more opportunities for DNA polymerase to slip. And four times as many mutations occurred in the male parent as in the female parent. And this is consistent with what we know about the much larger, larger number of DNA replications in the male germline. So here's a question. Think about a particular CODIS allele that was present in your grandfather. What's the probability that the allele that you inherited from your father, from your grandfather, has a different number of repeats because of mutation? 